It's your job to fix the network. So on router three, show version. Notice the configuration register is set to this value. On a very old router, such as a 2500 or 1600, the routers used to have a mini operating system. Modern day routers don't have that. So that value is essentially irrelevant for a lot of modern day routers. So I'll set it to 0x2102. So show version shows us what the configuration register will be at next reload. So reload, don't want to save the configuration. Press enter to confirm the reboot. Let's see what happens. Now we're still getting issues where test bin is not found. Why is the router trying to load this test.bin file. Why does it try and do that a few times and then boot with the default operating system? So again, why does it try and load this file, test.bin, and then eventually load this file? So let's have a look. Show run. Can you see the problem? Notice boot system flash test.bin. Now this is an issue in packet tracer where, where the command is shown twice, but notice the router has been configured to boot off a flash and to load the test.bin operating system. DRR shows us the contents of flash. This router has this operating system in flash. That's the only binary file or operating system in the flash of the router. So this command doesn't make sense. If we had an operating system in flash called test.bin, the router would be able to boot off of that operating system, but it's not available in the flash of the router. So the router has defaulted to using the first operating system found in flash. This is the only operating system available. So that's the one that's loaded. We can see that by using the show version command. Notice this is the operating system that was booted. So that's the one that the router is using at the moment. So we need to get rid of this command. So no boot system flash test.bin. Do show run. We still have that command once. Do that again. On a real router, you shouldn't have to type it twice or multiple times. But show run now shows us that that command is missing. But that doesn't really help us because the router doesn't have any configuration. So if we rebooted the router now, it would load this configuration but the router doesn't have any IP addresses and isn't configured with any protocols. Show start shows us the startup configuration with the boot system command, but the router once again doesn't have any IP addresses configured and doesn't have a routing protocol configured. So how are we going to restore the configuration of router three? Did you notice that when I used the DRR command that a backup configuration is available in the flash of the router? Now the more command allows you to read the contents of files in flash. This is very similar to the more command found in Linux. So more flash alive config, we are reading the contents of this file in flash. Notice that command is found in the file, but we also see the loopback IP address and the IP address of interface gigabit to zero slash zero slash zero, and we see EIGRP. Now we've been told that we can't configure IP addresses manually 
or configure EIGRP. So I'm simply gonna copy the file from Flash to the running configuration of the router. Now I don't remember what the file name is, so DRR shows us that. So do the command again. File is a live config. Destination file name is running configuration. Notice the loopback interface has come up. So show IP interface brief. We see the IP address of the loopback interface. Notice, however, that this interface is still shut down. When you do a restore like that, you need to no shut interfaces. And we can see now that EIGRP has formed a neighbor relationship. So show IP interface brief. Interfaces are up, up. Show IP protocols. We are using EIGRP. Show IP EIGRP neighbors. We've got a neighbor relationship. Show IP route. We've learned various routes, including the loopback of router one and the loopback of router two. So router three can ping both the loopback of router one and the loopback of router two. Router two should hopefully be able to ping the loopback of router one and the loopback of router three, which it can. And router one should be able to ping itself. Loopback of router two and loopback of router three. So that all works. Looks good. We now need to fix this issue once again. Because we restored this configuration, it did emerge. So that command needs to be removed again. When you copy files into running configuration, it does emerge. Missing commands are added back. So we need to remove that. Show run shows us the running configuration. That all looks good. Now the startup configuration on this router is incorrect. So I'm going to save the configuration by using WR. In the exam, you would use the command copy running config, startup config. So show startup config again. We can see a proper startup configuration. So that all looks good. But we need to verify this by power cycling devices. So I'm going to click power cycle devices. Say yes. Here's router two booting its operating system. Router one booting its operating system. Router three booting its operating system. It's not complaining about test.bin not being found. So router three is booted up successfully. Router one is booted up successfully. Router two has booted up successfully. And we can verify things again on router two. Can we ping the loopback of router one? Yes, we can. Can we ping our local loopback? Yes, we can. Can we ping the loopback of router three? Yes, we can. On router three, can we ping the loopback of router one? Loopback of router two and ourselves? Yes, we can. So I'm happy with that. We've successfully restored the configurations of the devices. Network is working. Customers are happy. And you are a hero. Well, at least for the next five minutes until users complain about something else. So how did you do with the lab? Were you able to get it working? Make sure that you understand configuration register values for the CCNA exam.